Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I recently took every single one of my foundations and put them in unmarked containers and tested them out blindly so that I wouldn't know what label was on the foundation. I just wanted to know really how well I liked each of my foundations or didn't like them. I'm gonna link that video above and down below so that you can go watch the intro to how I did all that once you finish this video. This is the first resulting video from that whole method. I do a lot of foundation testing and I just really wanted to figure out what my top foundations were for different categories. And this is the first category, the top skin-like foundations. Just so you know my skin type before I get started, I have oily combination skin and I am over 40. That does make a difference in terms of what I am looking for from a foundation. These foundations are in no particular order because they're the top five and they are from overlapping categories. As I was wearing these foundations each day, I didn't know what foundation I was wearing. So I took notes and I made a spreadsheet so that I would know exactly what type of coverage, what type of finish, how it applied and things like that. Some of these are from the light coverage category, some are from the medium coverage category, and that's just the way it works out. In the light coverage category, I applied all of them with a brush on the first day. If I didn't like that, I then tried them with a sponge, and I did use my Hourglass Fail Primer with these foundations. I took notes on all the foundations that I tried with coverage and pores and how natural they looked, if they lasted a long time, were they skin-like, did they blur, did they apply quickly, were they oil controlling, and how was the finish, things like that. Hey guys, I'm cutting in really quickly because after I edited this video down, I realized I didn't really go into the methodology of me during the blind testing phase of just what exactly went on and what I did. So if you're interested in seeing that, which is beyond the top five foundations, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna tack that on at the end for those of you who are interested. I did try and get videos or pictures on the days that I wore them, but I do work full time and sometimes things prevented that from happening. So I insert pictures or videos where I can. If for some reason I didn't get that, I did try to insert a clip from the foundation road test. I will link the foundation road test to those below so that if you wanna see further information, you can do that. So we can get back into the video, but again, you can stay tuned to the end if you guys wanna see more information about what went on during the actual blind testing and what foundations I actually use in each category. The first one that I'm gonna talk about is the It Bye Bye Lines Foundation. I just recently did a video on it Cosmetics foundation so that you can try and clarify what foundation is what because they can kind of overlap and be confusing. I will also link that here and down below so that you can go catch that after you watch this video. So on the day that I wore It By By Lines, which I did not know it was It By By Lines, I said that it applied like a dream. It was very skin-like and I have that underlined. It gave me a natural finish. It had light coverage, but it blurred my pores it applied nicely with all three methods. So with this foundation, I did use my fingers, a brush, and a sponge. I did it half and half with a brush and a sponge on that day, and then I think the next day I used my fingers. It did build up where I needed it to build up. I needed concealer on my sunspots. It set well without looking too matte. Beautiful and lightweight, skin evening and blurring, and it makes my skin look healthy. And I have three stars by it, <laughs> which meant something good because I really didn't put stars by anything at all, if ever. So this foundation really stood out for me. I didn't know it was this foundation at the time, but it really did stand out for me in terms of looking like skin and giving me everything I wanted. I also wore it for nine and a half hours, and it lasted really nicely. So this is definitely in my top five skin-like foundations. Next up is the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet Foundation. This was not originally in the initial video. I can't remember if I showed the whole grouping of foundations or not. I got this a few days later, I finally broke down and got this foundation right when I got the Chanel bronzer that I recently got that I love. I finally just broke it down and got it because I did a foundation road test on this. So this actually ended up being day nine of my light coverage foundations. You do get sheer to medium coverage with this foundation and I feel like True to what I said in my original review, I like applying this with a dry sponge or with my fingers the best. I really don't like blending this out with a brush. 
I don't know. I just feel like it doesn't blend out well on my nose that much and it sets really, really quickly. And with a damp sponge, it gives me super, super sheer coverage. So if you want true skin-like coverage, you can use a damp sponge and get just a really sheer veil of coverage. It really does give a velvet finish. I don't know of any other foundations or BB creams that I have that give me a velvet finish the way this has. I would say it's a matte finish, but it's not a super matte flat finish like you would think it has. It's so skin like it's it's crazy to me how quickly it applies, how quickly it sets. It's such a thin foundation yet gives such nice blurring pore minimizing coverage. It's really a perfect foundation. The reason why it's not quite perfect is because it does have alcohol in it. So it's not something I'm going to wear every single day because I don't want to put that on my face every single day, but it's a beautiful foundation. If you want something that looks truly like skin, that feels lightweight and really just blurs everything out, this is a perfect, beautiful foundation. It's also very travel friendly too. I love this. It just melds into the skin. It controls oil really nicely as well. So this is definitely for sure in my top five. The last three are in the medium slash satin category, which is kind of strange to think that three skin-like foundations are in the medium coverage category, but they are. The first is Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. I actually have not been pulling this out very much, probably because I have so many foundations. I need to do a declutter very soon. I've been doing some declutters, but I just haven't gotten to the foundations and really couldn't do it until I got through this whole process. So I have in my notes, the day I wore this, that this foundation, which I didn't know what it was at the time, was kind of matte slash demi matte after application and it fused to the skin when applying. Super skin-like, I underlined that. And it gave me medium coverage that airbrushed my skin and blurred it. And when I put a powder on, it appeared matte. It wore well during the day and it made my skin look really nice. I've always liked this foundation. Well, of course, when I wore it, I didn't know what it was and I hadn't worn it in a while and I really forgot how much I enjoyed wearing this foundation. With this medium coverage category, I wore all of these with a more glowy primer underneath and if that didn't work then I switched to my hourglass veil I didn't have to switch with this one it lasted fine with the glowy primer and that primer was the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow primer this was a really nice foundation and I do like that it's not a super matte medium coverage foundation but you can get medium coverage and have it still be skin like and I think that's what a lot of us want, especially as we're getting older and we start getting those little sunspots. We want them to be blurred out. We want a little bit of coverage, but we don't want to look like we're wearing a mask. And that is what these last three do. So this is definitely up there. And I feel like this is an underrated foundation. People never talk about this foundation anymore. And it is, it's a hidden gem. I love it. If you saw this review, this is going to come as no surprise to you. And I apologize because of the price point, but it is such a good foundation. The La Mer, what, I don't know what the official name of this is, La Mer something, Soft Fluid Long Wear Foundation, Broad Spectrum SPF 20. This foundation is just so good. The notes that I have for day six of my wear test were blended out very easily, skin-like and blurring, demi matte finish, did need to set, very satin, light medium coverage, once sat looks demi matte. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so it was satin and then it sat to demi matte. Sometimes my notes don't always make sense. <laughs> looks so pretty and natural, underlined twice. Very skin like. Lasted nicely all day long, nine hours. Forgot to blot or touch up all day. Still on face. Some shine, but doesn't look greasy. Pores not as good as earlier, but blotted and everything's good again. So those are my notes. These are the kind of notes that I take, but I mean, I'm working and busy and I just have to jot down things as I think of them. But I mean, that's what you guys need to know is how they wear on a real day. And this foundation is so pretty. Now this is one that I did notice the scent when I put it on. I kind of knew what it was, but I 
had done several of these reviews and I just tried my hardest to go in with blinders on and be as objective as possible when the day went on and just looked at it like it could have been a drugstore foundation. Because, you know, sometimes you do know from scents with this when you're going in what you're putting on your face. It didn't happen too often, but it did happen with this. I mean, it's just got that distinct La Mer scent. There's nothing you can do. You know, I can't put a clothespin on my nose every time I put foundation on. It just doesn't work that way. I went in just like, okay, maybe I have a drugstore one that smells like this. I don't really know. Let's just go in and see exactly how this wears all day long. It performs how it performs. That's it. So I love this foundation. It is a great one to have if you want a skin-like natural finish. My final foundation is a foundation that I have not pulled out in months maybe a year. It's been way too long for as fantastic as this foundation was during this testing. This was day one of the medium satin category, and this turned out to be Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. What I have written is it applied very quickly, and I have a star by Airbrushed Finish, not satin, demi matte medium coverage after setting easily buildable skin like underlined twice poor blurring with a star long lasting 10 hours one blot with an exclamation point pretty much perfect and I have five stars next to it <laughs> who knew i mean this was pretty much perfect i have it in my notes and i have not pulled this out in forever. Now, it does feel pretty light, so when I was wearing this, I was wearing it pretty often. This is a really good foundation for my skin anyway, and I don't know why I haven't been wearing it because I've been testing out and wearing so many other foundations, that's why. But I need to bring this back to the front of my rotation for sure. Have you guys tried any of these foundations? If you have, leave me your thoughts, good or bad, below. I wanna hear how you guys feel about these foundations. I'm gonna list my shades down below for you guys. If you want to see more of my foundation shade matches, I do have them listed in my blog, which is linked down below in my description box. If you're new and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can see how these other blind foundation testing reviews are gonna go, as well as other beauty related videos too. Okay, so if you're still here, you wanna know a little bit more about how the blind testing went on and what foundations I used and that kind of thing. So if you look up in the cards and down below in the description box, you can see that intro video and that's gonna give you the methods. I'm not gonna go through all that again because that's gonna make this video really long. But what I will tell you is that I did it category by category. This particular video, pulled from the light slash daily and medium satin categories. Within the light daily categories, I'm gonna just fly through those foundations really quickly. There are nine foundations in the light daily category and there were eight in the medium satin. There's gonna be other categories. Some of these foundations may fall in those top five videos. So these are the nine light daily foundations I used. CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir, Shiseido, Synchro Skin, Estee Lauder Double Wear Light, It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation, Neutrogena Hydro Boost, Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet, It CC Cream, Co Gendo, and It Bye Bye Lines Foundation. The Medium Satin Foundations are the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation, which I did have to combine into one container because I have to mix my colors. The Stellar Beauty Foundation, L'Oreal True Match, NARS Sheer Glow, Too Faced Born This Way, Tarte Rainforest of the Sea, Urban Decay Naked Skin, and La Mer. So you can probably tell some of the foundations that I just called out were not in this video, but they'll probably be in another video down the line, which means that if you're not subscribed, you need to subscribe so that you can see if they're in another top five video. Because I do so much foundation testing, I have a lot of foundations. So my goal in all this at the end of the day is not only to tell you guys what my top five foundations are in these subcategories that I have created, but it's also to get rid of foundations that I'm not wearing that aren't making the cut for me and that I really am not liking as much as I thought I was liking and to get rid of some that might be redundant. I might not need 
foundations that are all doing the same thing for me and I can get rid of them and clear out some of the clutter. So you saw in the intro video that I had everything labeled in little baggies. I did get asked if I was worried about them drying out. No, because I had them sealed in a box also inside a drawer and I did not have any problem with anything drying out at all. So each day I would open up the drawer, open up the box, open up a Ziploc bag of the category that I was in. I went one category at a time. For instance, I started with the medium satin category. I would pull out the container and then label it day one, day two, day three, whatever day I was on. I would just wear the foundation. I would take notes on how it was wearing that day. Hopefully I'd get a picture of that day as well. And then I would move on to the next day. And that just went on throughout this testing. And I would start to try and guess what I was wearing. Oh, you know, this might be Too Faced Born This Way. This might be Estee Lauder Double Wear. And it was really interesting trying to figure things out. So at the end of every category, I would add things to a spreadsheet so that I could see, you know, whether they were skin-like based on my notes. And I would start to X things off as to how they fell on the spreadsheet. According to my notes and according to what I had X off, that's kind of how I made the subcategories. And then I just started thinking which ones are my top five. And after I did all of that with the subcategories, that's when I started to reveal what they were to myself. And I was a little surprised. I know this video is not drugstore. I assure you they are not all not drugstore. So stay tuned for the rest of what's to come. And you'll see first off what subcategories I have coming and you'll see what foundations made the cut, what didn't make the cut. And hopefully you will find this to be very helpful for you. And I hope to start adding this to my blog as well so that you'll have a permanent reference. Of course, as I try foundations, I'll add those in there as well. If you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you've not seen that intro video, go catch that because that's going to do a whole lot of explaining as well. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.